Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to the Banzuke Breakdown for Hatsu 2024, ringing in the new year right with some bonkers ass committee decisions. Now, this Banzuke came together relatively cleanly. It's not all over the place. There's not a lot of crazy stuff going on. It was fairly predictable as these, these things go. However, there are a few things we can talk about. And I guarantee you, for as much as some people were talking about, oh, maybe somebody will get a perfect score and best the, uh, guess the Bonzuke for the first time in 25 years, uh-uh, isn't going to happen. And we will talk about why. All right, you've got the channel's predictions on the left, how it actually turned out on the right. If you've never been here before, you'll figure out what's going on. Let's get into this. So for starters, we'll start at the top just to cover everything. Terra no Fuji, of course, the Yokozuna stays in place. Kirishima, his 13 wins, he's the number one Ozeki. Hoshoryu, his 10 wins, the number two Ozeki. Taki Keisho, nine wins, number three Ozeki. Balancing things out, we've got one, two on the left, one, two on the right. Everything's fine, we move on. And we immediately hit something a little, a little bit bonkers. Kotonowaka and Aisho are flipped compared to expectation well why is this so crazy let me show you a query i came up with on the sumo database to show you just why this is so weird so here's the query what i did was i looked for sekiwake one east wrestlers who finished with eight to ten wins in basically the last 20 years right and who also got demoted to Sekiwake won West in the next tournament. So basically, they had a winning record, so they weren't going to lose rank, but they still got demoted within the rank. Well, in 2000, 2006, this happened three times. Twice to Koto Mitsuki, poor bastard. But this was not that weird back then. Kiseno Sato stands out because this happened to him with a 10-5 and five record. So let's look at his, uh, his Banzuke. What happened there? So here we can see Kiseno Sato, you know, he did good. He had his 10-5. and five. But Kotoshugiku, Kotoshogiku, finished 11 and 4. It's only a one win difference. But at that point in time, they did the same thing with Sekiwake that they did with Ozeki. I mentioned this during the Guess the Banzuke video. They would flip those guys anyway. It doesn't really matter if you're going to go to Ozeki. Like, it doesn't matter which Sekiwake slot you're in. So, who really cares that much? However, if we switch back, you'll see that it didn't happen again until 2018. Well, so did guys just not get better records as lower-ranked Sekiwake? No, they absolutely did. They just stopped doing the flip. Well, why did it happen this time? In this case, it was severe difference between the two guys. Ichino Joe, 8 and 7, but Takeyumi won the Yusho at 13 and 2, a 5-win difference. In that time frame, there was another Basho, I forget when, where there was a four-win difference between the higher-ranked Sekiwake and the lower-ranked one, and they left them in the same order. They didn't flip them. Only in this instance did they bump the guy from west to east and the guy from east to west. It took a five-win difference for them to do it. They just quit making these switches. So when you combine that with the fact, we'll go back to the breakdown screen, that in this case, not only was there only a two-win difference between Kotonowaka and Daisho, but Kotonowaka was Sekiwake 2 East. He's already getting a promotion within the rank. He's already going up. There's no reason. That if there's ever going to be a reason to bump a guy from a lower Sekiwake slot to a higher one and bump the guy from the higher one down, this would not seem to be it. Why did they do it this time? The only thing I can think of, the only thing I can think of, is that they're trying to make a point that Kotonowaka is Ozeki material. They're looking at him as the next big thing. You know, you've got Kirishima, he got there. Hoshoryu you got there. Takakesho's hanging on for dear life, but they want another guy. And Daisho has had his chances. And so he's like, eh, is he ever going to get there? Personally, I don't think so. He's a step ahead of Wakamoto Haru, but he's really not on that Ozeki level. I don't think he's going to do it. So are they trying to make a point? Are they trying to motivate Daisho? Are they trying to simply say, look, pay attention to Kotono Waka. If Daisho surprises us and ends up hitting that level, fantastic, but we're just not expecting it. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. It doesn't make sense. 
I am sure there's a few people with Guess the Bonsake who predicted this, but those people are they got lucky. They got lucky. If you play poker, it's like having a mediocre hand and looking at the person across the table and see saying to yourself, you know what? The only thing I can think I can beat is a bluff. And I don't know if they're bluffing, but I'm gonna go all in anyway and see. And then they snap you off with a much better hand, and somehow you get a really good run out, you give them a bad beat, you won, but you really shouldn't have. That's how it is for anybody who, who put Kotonowaka ahead here. It doesn't make sense, but they did it. Who the hell knows? I don't know if this is the start of a new trend. We're gonna have to wait and see. Of course, we've got Takiyasu and our boy Ura, who are the Komasubi, as they were supposed to be. We're all very happy. But now we can move on to uh, Wakamoto Haru and Atami Fuji. Now, for Wakamoto Haru to go 6-9 and nine, and then end up only going from here, Sekiwaki 1 West, to uh, Maegashira 1 East, that's a hell of a parachute. That is a hell of a parachute. It's not completely uh, weird. It's not completely out of line. Bear in mind, Atami Fuji, if you look over on the left, I had him predicted as one east because it seemed pretty obvious but it was a seven and a half rank increase so by moving him to one west he still gets his plus seven on 11 and four he's not getting under promoted that was probably part of the logic here why they decided to really overprotect wakamoto haru and hokuto fuji who we'll get to in a second this time when they haven't seemed quite so inclined to give that protection to the Sanyaku guys all year. I'm not really sure, but clearly that's what was going on. They really overprotected the Sanyaku guys dropping out this time in a way that they haven't for several Bashos. In that respect though, and some people I saw who shared their guess the Banzuke predictions, they did put Wakamoto Haru at one East. They got this right. You know, we didn't. That's fine. Not a big deal. It's not that weird of a choice. They did what they did. Let's let's go on. Midori Fuji finishing behind Wakamoto Haru and because uh, remember, if you do the math of Wakamoto Haru dropping to um, to Magashira to West, and then Midori Fuji coming up to two West, they were quote unquote tied. So if you're going to bump Wakamoto Haru up that far, and Atami Fuji was already ahead, then Midori Fuji fits in at 2 East very cleanly. Abi, he drops to 2 West ahead of Gonoyama. Uh, he, that's a little bit of a parachute for the Komasubi, but it, it's really the only one that they could give him. Now, a lot of people said, and I agreed with this in retrospect, I hadn't thought of it, that Hokuto Fuji and Ryuden should have been flip-flopped. So over here, you can see I had Hokuto Fuji at 5 East and Ryudin at 4 West. Well, if you give Hokuto Fuji a pretty reasonable parachute, then moving him to 4 West and Ryudin from going up as far as he was uh, from 10 East to 5 East does make sense. That is a decision that, in retrospect, I probably should have made, even though that's not how it turned out. I would have been right about Ryudin at least. But this one... Moving Hokuto Fuji all the way to 3 West, I don't get this one at all. Here's why. Tobizaru was in the joy. Tobizaru had a very legitimate Senyaku level uh, schedule. There is really no reason why he had to be pushed back. He was 7 and 8, and mathematically, this fit really well. It fit for him to stay in place very, very well, and they don't really have an issue doing that for guys. I would have been a lot less surprised if Hokuto Fuji had gone to 4 East and Tobizaru was left at 3 West and then showed I still got bumped back. That wouldn't have been my prediction, even if I had thought of it, but I would be less surprised by it. Giving Hokuto Fuji this size of a parachute is really kind of a shock. I, I understand if you've watched these videos for a while, I know I probably seem like a trend chaser and they keep changing their trends, so... I'm always going to get some of these things wrong. I still haven't necessarily figured out the art of this stuff. But this one, I did see some Guess the Banzake uh, predictions where people thought Hokuto Fuji was going to be a 3 West. They're probably going to win because that was a hell of a prediction. But there was really no good reason for them to save him to this extent. 
Somewhere at Magashira 4 does make sense. 3 West seems excessive. It really does. And in a lot of other circumstances, I don't think that would have happened. They did it this time. Okay, fine. The rest of what happened there pretty much follows along, though. Hokuto Fuji, by the way, if you're new to the breakdowns, the different colors are, uh, for guess the Bonzake, white is a correct guess, so that's worth two points. Yellow is, it was the right rank, but the wrong side, so those are one point. Orange is off by one number, so I guess that Toby Zara was going to be at three, at Maegashira three, he ended up at Maegashira four, so he goes to orange. Hokuto Fuji, I thought he was going to be at five. He ended up at three, so he goes red. That's how that works. Anyway, once you put Hokuto Fuji at three west, everything else shakes out exactly the way you'd expect. Tobizaru gets bumped down, Shodai gets bumped over, Ryuden gets bumped down, and Nishikigi ends up, oh, I actually got Nishikigi correct. Why did I make him orange? Haha, <laughs> I'm an idiot. So really, the only question there is, why did they put Hokuto Fuji there and not further down? But it's not completely illogical, so okay. Rest assured, the idea that nobody is going to nail this prediction perfectly is not based on any of the things I've brought up so far. We're still getting to that stuff. Ken Bozan and Shonen Umi really know where uh, else for them to go. Now, this is interesting. We got this right. Ichi Yamamoto and Asano Yama. The guess was that Ichi Yamamoto was going to get pushed ahead because he was mathematically ahead, even though there was definitely an argument to put Asano Yama at 7 East. And the main reason for that was the same reason for putting Wakamoto Haru ahead of Atami Fuji. If you put Ichi Yamamoto over at 7 West, see, he's got seven and a half ranks here, put him over here, then he is plus seven on 11 and four. It's exactly the same as with Atami Fuji, but they gave him the extra half rank. Why? I don't know. In this case, I thought they would be consistent with giving the lower rank guys coming up that extra boost. In this case, they were inconsistent, and it simply worked to my advantage in one of those cases. A good old Bun Bun on the Sumo Forum pointed out that they seem to be limiting the parachutes to Sanyaku drops only. The Joy drops, the, the top Maegashira levels, don't seem to be getting that kind of protection. Is that going to continue? I mean, who the hell knows? They could change this at any time. But for the moment, that does seem to be the case. They just dropped Asano Yama as far as they could. Yes, they could have put Hokuseiho ahead of him, but as we've discussed, they're, they don't like Hokuseiho. They're not going to do him any favors. Asano Yama was always going to be the one that got ahead in that tie. But they gave Ichi Yamamoto the spot ahead. It does make sense, just like Atami Fuji staying ahead would have made sense. But this is how they made their decision. Okay. Here to Umi and Mitaki Umi. This one, this one causes me some pain. Here to Umi, under most circumstances, I would have guessed to be ahead of Mitaki Umi. The only reason I personally thought Mitaki Umi would be in front was because there were zero half rank increases for eight and sevens all year, even when it might have made sense to do so. I thought they were going to continue that. Maybe because uh, Oho and Saturn Umi didn't have a choice but to only go up a half rank they decided to do it for consistency's sake i'm not sure maybe they just decided why are we protecting this this doesn't make a difference here whatever their reason they decided to flip-flop these two guys it's not a huge deal if you just look at overall well how did i do predicting the bonzuke if you're like well i flipped these two guys not a big deal if you're competitive and playing guess the bonzuke this one hurts because this is four points lost and that's going to be a lot of places but hey it is what it is. This one's not a big deal. It makes a lot of sense why they did that. So we don't have a lot to discuss. They just favored the 9 and 6 guy over the 8 and 7 guy. No biggie. Uh, Tamawashi, Surgisho, you know, they stayed ahead of Sad Naomi and Oho. That was always going to happen. Takano Sho, if you'll recall from the Guess the Banzuke video, him and Miyogiri, you really didn't have a choice but to eat the extra half rank demotion. Chura Naomi, I said I had uh, this really weird feeling that they were gonna bump Chura and Umi back uh, for Endo and Ona show and they didn't and I I didn't have the nerve to go with it and that's good because I ended up getting it right Endo got an extra half rank of over demotion as well but this is where we get to the one that has 
almost certainly screwed up everybody's prediction. Kota Shoho and Ona Show. Now there is one piece of logic, one, for why they would take Ona Show, who was already dropping nine ranks on three and 12, which is the kind of rank, uh, rank drop and record where they would normally give a guy less of a demotion because they don't want him to get cratered too hard and bump him up a little bit. For them to over demote Ona Show for a Jurio guy, remember, Kota Shoho was Jurio 1 West. Let me, let me write that a little more clearly. Jurio 1 West. Yes, he won the U Show. Yes, he was 12 and 3. He did really well. But, but over demoting a guy who was Maigashira 5 to give an extra spot for a guy coming up from Jurio is unfathomable. It's unheard of. They don't do this. The only reason, getting back to the, the whole there was a reason, is that Takano Show got an extra half rank demotion. Miyogiryu, extra half rank demotion. Endo, extra half rank demotion. So why not do it to own a show as well? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they don't do this consistency shit that often. For an example, let's look at Asano Yama and Wakamoto Haru. They have never, ever shown a particular need to say, okay, well, the, these couple of guys are getting a certain movement, so we'll move this guy the same to keep it equal. They will do what they think looks right in each spot, regardless of the spots around them. For Onisho to get bumped back, if you don't think that this is the reason, I can't begin to explain why this happened. I cannot begin to guess. And if they're starting to do these, uh, these relative, these same relative movements, that's going to be new. And that'll be something to keep an eye on. But there's just too many weird things that happen when you're putting a Banzuke together. You just can't do that that often. And for them to do it here is wild, wild. Onisha was hurt. Onisha wasn't even, fight, like, it's not like Hokuseiho, right? I hate to keep bagging on the guy, but he just doesn't seem to try that hard. We all know the story. I'm not going to get into it. But Onisha was going all out, but his knees were not there. His knees were not there. He couldn't fight worth anything. To punish him like this is, I, I can't, I cannot, I cannot even begin to guess why. I, it is beyond me. It is absolutely beyond me. Ah, uh, but you know, congratulations to Kota Shoho. He got his extra half rank. I wonder if that's going to help. Eh. Uh, anyway, going on from there, everything else works out pretty much as ex as expected. Tomokaze and uh, Takara Fuji both got their exact emotions, which left 15 West open for Onosato, and then Bushozan, Shimizu Umi, and Aoyama all came in in the order that they were supposed to. So we have a little bit of sanity at the end. We have some sanity in the middle. We just have a little bit of crazy at the start and a lot at the end. Oh, <sighs> so that's it for the Banzake breakdown for Hatsu 2024. How do you feel about how this all turned out? What do you think about the Ona Show thing? I really want to know what people think about this Ona Show thing. Kotonawaka and Daisho, tell me about that too. Do you think this is correct? Do you think they should start flip-flopping Sekiwake based on records the same way they do with Ozeki, the same way they used to do in the past? I'm really curious what people's opinions on this are. I can't do a straw poll in the comments, but if a lot of people seem to have an opinion on this, I'll do a community post and we can actually make a vote on it and see what people think. Other than that, January's coming up. It's going to be a fun one. I don't even know who I have right now as my favorites outside of obviously Kirishima and Kotonowaka, because at this point, they should always be everybody's favorites for everything. I hope you've enjoyed the breakdown. I hope you've learned something. Anything else you want to say in the comments, please hit me up, like, subscribe. You know the deal. We all YouTubers say it. I'll catch you later. And the last thing of all, if you happen to know a good way of dealing with Sciatica, could you leave that in the comments? I'd appreciate it. Thank you, and have a wonderful day.